Hello everyone, thank you for joining today. In this video, we're going to talk about post-assembly QC and how to evaluate the quality of your assembly and the different tool to do that. So that's a tutorial that's provided to you by ERGA, the European Reference Genome Atlas. It's a network of researchers that aim to generate quality uh, reference genome for all eukaryotic life in Europe and make these resources available to researchers all over the world. Uh, so for the tutorial today, we're going to study three organisms. One is a sponge, the second one is a snake, and finally we have a whale. So for simplicity in this tutorial, we're going to focus only on the sponge because it's a faster uh, training data sets to run. And uh, we're going to start by uploading the data into Galaxy. So first thing is we're going to copy the uh, tabular data in the tutorial. And in a new history, we're going to click on upload on the activity bar on the left. So we're going to rule based upload. We're going to paste the data there and we're going to select only the data that belongs to the sponge. So we're going to remove everything that is irobustus. We're going to remove everything that is regine. But if you want to do the whole tutorial with the three species, you can upload everything. And uh, we want to upload the data into collections. So in the upload type, we're going to click on collections. Then we're going to click on build. And you can see that the tabular data has been divided into the columns uh, with the data set name, the data set URL, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to specify um, what each column means. And uh, we're going to do that by clicking on rules, add modify column definitions. And the first thing we're going to define is the list identifier. So this is colon A. Then in colon B, we have the URLs, colon B. In C, we have the type of file, so add definition type, colon C. Then we're going to add a group tag, colon D. And finally, we're going to specify um, the collection name in colon E. Okay, we verify, we have list identifier, URL in colon B, then type, group tag, collection name. We can apply and we can upload our data. So this is for importing the pack by reads. The next step is we're going to import a set of data, including the assembly, metadata, and high C data. And uh, this is a separate upload because we're going to upload these as data sets and not as collection. So you're going to go back to the hands-on tutorial, copy the second set of uh, tabulated data, and then back in Galaxy, upload, rule-based. You're going to remove what you inserted before and click the new data set tabular file. So this time again, we're going to remove um, everything that is not belonging to the sponge, but we also keep the taxonomy data and the diamond data base because this is going to be useful for uh, all three analyses, and so we want to keep it. Okay, so we want to remove irobustus, irigine, and we keep only the C reformers data, the taxonomy data, and the diamond DB. This time in upload type, you're gonna click on data sets and build. Again, we're going to go through applying rules to every of these uh, columns to specify what they correspond to. And we're going to start with um, the name of the data sets. This is column A. Then the URLs, which are column B. Column C is the type of file. And finally, D is a name tag. Okay, we can apply, we verify, we have, uh, oh, see, I made a mistake, that's why you verify. Name and name tag, so name type should be colon D, okay, name, URL, type, name tag, we're good, I can apply, and we can upload. And you can see in your history, you have um, your pack by your reads, your assembly, the metadata, the i-series, taxonomy data, and diamond database. 
We're gonna wait a couple of minutes for it to upload and I'll come back for the rest of the analysis. Okay, now that it's all uploaded, we're gonna go back to the hands-on and we're gonna start by generating um, alignments for our assembly. And this is gonna allow us to get uh, read coverage. And read coverage gives us information about how much trust you can have in some regions of your assembly. If you have low coverage, you have uh, increased chances of error or um, of an increased chance that this region is not well res uh, resolved in your assembly. So we're going to generate the read coverage data with Minimap2. Uh, but first, what we're going to do is we're going to collapse the collection of packed bio data because uh, Minimap2 is going to use one single FastQ data set. So we're going to go into research tool and we're going to do collapse collection. And we're going to select data set collection and we're going to select our pack bio collection. Then you can run the tool. Then the next step is we're going to go and use minimap. And we're going to use uh, genome from our history because we want to generate the coverage of our assembly. So we're going to use seriformatis assembly and we're going to use single reads, uh, single end reads because this is a packed bio data set. And we're going to use the collab collection, collapse collection on the packed bio data. And the profile of preset option, we're going to select pack by your high five, yes, versus reference mapping. Um, and that's all that we're going to change. So we're going to verify. Okay, we're running it using the assembly as a reference. We're using the collapse collection on the pack by your reads. And we're using pack by your high five versus reference mapping as a set of preset options. Once it's all good, we can run the tool. And while it's run, the next step that we're going to do is uh, we're going to use Diamond to generate sequence similarity data. Um, and it's going to get us information on uh, some functional annotation of our sequences. Okay, so we're going to go into Galaxy and we're going to use Diamond. And we're going to use Diamond as a BlastX tool. So we're going to use a standard code and we're going to change the parameters as described in the tutorial. So we're going to allow for frame shift. We're going to restrict the hit and we're going to put a frame shift penalty of 15. Then the input query file in FASTA or FASTQ format, we're going to use our assembly. And the reference database we're going to use is the one from history, which is a diamond DB that we uploaded at the beginning of the tutorial. Uh, we're not going to restrict the search taxonomically. We're going to use a sensitivity mode of fast with a block size of 10. So if using this tool on a bigger species and you find that it runs out of memory, you can try um, smaller block size. And we're going to select a method for filtering, which is the maximum E value to report alignment. And the method to restrict the number of hits is the maximum number of target sequences. 
Okay, so we don't change either of these parameters now. And we're going to select an output option that is blast tabular. So you're going to have this output option that are hidden for now. So you can click on this gray bar output option and it's going to unfold a set of parameters um, that you can modify. So the format of output, we're going to select blast tabular and we're going to select a set of fields that are described in the tutorial. And we select those fields because some tool takes different format of blast tabular data, uh, data sets. Okay. So we start with query sec ID and subject sec ID. Okay. This is good. We have this here. The next one is start of alignment in query and end of alignment in query. So you see that we have them here, but we have, um, these parameters here in between that we don't need. So we're going to remove percentage of identical matches, alignment length, number of mismatch and number of gap openings. Then after start and end of alignment in query, we have expected value and bit score. And you can find them at the end here. Uh, so we can remove start of alignment in subject and end of alignment in subject. And finally, the last column that we need to add is unit subject taxonomy IDs. So you're going to click at the end of the window here to add fields and we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for the unique subject taxonomy ID here. So you can click and you see that it's been added to the list. If ever your tabular fields are in the wrong order, you can remove everything and just click on them in the right order to order them properly. And that's all the parameters that we're going to change for this tool. And we're going to click on run. Finally, we're going to generate the bus call report. And this is the third tool that we're going to run that's going to generate statistic about our assembly as a uh, quality of the assembly. And uh, all these three data sets that we run, including Busco, we're going to um, integrate them into one final tool called Bob Toolkits. And um, I'm going to talk about that later. So first we're going to generate the Busco report. So Busco is a tool that look at a set of orthologous gene uh, that are expected to be found in your family or in your taxonomic group. And they are expected to be found in this taxonomic group in one copy and one copy only. And this gives you information about, do you find all of these genes in your species? Do you find them in only one copy? And that gives you indication on how complete and how duplicated is your assembly compared to what you would expect. Um, so the goal is to have as precise a taxonomy as you can, uh, that will give lessen the chance that, uh, you have duplicated gene that are supposed to be in that group, but not in the bigger vertebrate group, for example, and so it's going to give you more precise results. Uh, so in this analysis, we're going to use uh, the sequence to analysis. So we're going to start by searching for Busco. And we're going to select uh, the sequence to analysis. So we want to analyze our assembly. For the lineage data source, uh, you can use catch lineage data. And you want to use Busco v5 lineage data sets, uh, the most recent uh, one that you can find in your Galaxy instance. And we want to use um, genome assembly mode because we are analyzing our genome assembly. And we want to use Meta EUK as a gene predictor. So in that case, for the uh, sponge, we're going to use auto detect the lineage group. Um, if you find that you have error 
you can try entering the linear group by yourself. Uh, for example, the genome of the Viper in this tutorial in some galaxy assembly can fail with the auto lineage, and in that case, you could enter vertebrate, for example, for your Viper uh, and fix the problem that way. Uh, all, all that we want is the short summary text. So we're not going to change this one, but you have a different set of output for this tool which can be used uh, if you want to use down the line. So you can have a GFF with all the genes that have been identified in your assembly, uh, the list of the genes that have been found missing, and a summary image. But in this case, since we're going to use Busco and feed it into an aggregator tool, we just need the summary text. OK, so we're going to run the tool. And we're going to wait a couple minutes for it to finish running because we're going to aggregate this coverage, this um, taxonomic identity, and this um, quality of the genome statistics into one tool. So I'll be back in a few minutes. OK, now that it's done running, we're going to aggregate all these results with Blob Toolkit. So the Blob Toolkit uh, set of tool is uh, done in three steps. So the first step is we're going to create the reference assembly, and we're going to do that with Blob Toolkit and provide it um, the assembly and with size which um, taxonomy ID it belongs to. Uh, the second step is we're going to use Blob to kill again, but this time we're going to add all these evidences that we created to this reference uh, genome. And finally, we're going to use the interactive Blob Toolkit to visualize all this data. So the first step is we're going to select Blob Toolkit and select the mode Create a Blob Toolkit Dataset. So let's search for Blob Toolkit. There you go, create a blob to lead data set. We're going to use the assembly uh, metadata file. We're going to use uh, the C reformatis metadata. And we're going to use the taxonomy ID that is described in the tutorial. So you can find the NCBI taxonomy ID by searching the NCBI website. Um, and for the NCBI taxon directory, we're going to use the taxonomy data that we uploaded in our history. So this taxonomy data um, is exactly that. It contains the taxonomy data from the NCBI website. Um, OK, so now that we have all these parameters filled up, we're going to run the tool. Now we're going to go back to Blob Toolkit. And we're going to, this time, add data to a Blob Toolkit data set. So we're going to use the blob toolkit.rgz that we produced at the previous step. We're going to use the tax dump directory that is in the history called taxonomy data. And we're going to use the Busco full table that we generated at the previous step. We're going to enable the diamond it. And we're going to provide the output of diamond. Now, what we're going to change is we're going to change the blast diamond file colon order. And we're going to do that to uh, correspond to the output parameter that we entered when we ran diamond. Do you remember we selected the QSEC ID, the um, taxonomy IDs, the bit score, the value, etc. And so we attribute the right number to the right columns. And then we are selecting an alignment file, that, the one that we generated with Minimap, to add the coverage to our analysis. OK, um, that's all the parameters that we needed to change. Now that we did that, we run the tool. So this time is going to recreate a 
blogdeal.ggz, which is uh, the data set containing all the information from the reference and the additional data set this time compared to the previous one. And it's also generated a static output plot. Uh, but we want to see what we want to see is the interactive plot. So we're going to select interactive block toolkit this time, and we're going to provide as a parameter the latest block tool.tgz outputs. Okay, we run the tools. So uh, we're going to wait until this uh, latest block toolkit has finished running, and when that happens, this interactive block toolkit will turn yellow. It will stay yellow because it's an interactive tool, which means it's going to keep running in the background. Uh, I'll show you how to stop it, but it will never turn green. Once you stop it, it's going to turn red, and uh, I'll show you how later. But first, we're going to wait until it's running, and we will take a look at the interactive plot. So now that we have our interactive Bob toolkit running, we can take a look at our plots. And we do that by going to the history, the data set, and clicking on the little eye, which will allow us to display the plots. So you see that we arrive directly at the um, block plot. If you want to change the view, you can go to data sets, and you have the different information. So you have your Brusco. Um, results where you have the number of complete gene, duplicated gene, fragmented gene. So it gives you information about uh, the completeness. So you see that you have 82% of the expected gene that you were expecting to find in Busco have been uh, found in your genome. Uh, you have 1.2% uh, of duplication, which is pretty good. And you have 10.2% who are fragmented. Fragmented means the gene is incomplete, so it can either be uh, some part of the gene hasn't been um, assembled, or it's been assembled between um, more than one contig. And you see that you have 7.8% of missing genes. Uh, we can look at the cumulative. This is a cumulative length of the assembly um, compared to the cumulative count of uh, scaffolds. Uh, you have the detail of the analysis, and you have the report with all the plots, and we're going to look at the snail graph. The snail graph gives you uh, information about... Um, so the longest contig is in red here, and you see the, in the middle you have the first contig, which is the longest, the second is a bit further from the center, the third is a, even more further from the center. Um, you have a red line and an orange line, which correspond to the N50 and N90. Uh, you have the cumulated length on the outside circle, and the blue um, colors show the composition in terms of GC content. Um, and when you look at the block plot, so this one uh, is not very uh, informative. But you can look at the um, training material to see what it looks like for a more um, complete genome. And you can see that you have this information that gives you information about do you have contaminant in your genome, uh, how are your sequences distributed uh, uh, along the GC content, and this kind of information. Uh, you have, for example, here, uh, originata assembly, where you can see that the bubble are colored by um, taxonomy. Um, now we're going to look at um, Kema genome profiling. So um, Kema gave you information about uh, what your genome looks like, uh, for example, what is the estimated length of your genome, what is the rate of heterozygosity, and uh, how, how duplicated is your assembly. So we're going to start with generating a camera profile with Merrill. So we're going to go back to Galaxy, search for Merrill, and we're going to select the option count operation. And we're going to count the across of Kalnebo Kama, and we're going to count that on uh, 
the pack by reads. We're going to select a camera size of 21. Um, and we're going to run the tool. So if you want to stop looking, if you want to, if you have done looking at your blog toolkit data set, uh, you can stop it by going to the interactive tool on the left of your activity bar, select and stop it. You can always rerun it later if you want to come back to the plot. So while Marin is running, it's creating a database. Uh, there's not much we can do. We, we can do with it by ourselves. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, union sum the Merrill database. Um, so we do that because when we run Merrill, it's going to run the count operation on each FASTQ file in your collection of PacBio reads. And we want to merge that into one data set uh, with the sum of the count who have the full camera profile in your assembly. So we're going to do come back to tools. Look for mirror. And this one we're going to do operation on set of cameras and we're going to select union sum. And we're doing that on the Mary database that we just ran. So it's going to create a new Mary database and using this um, database, we're going to generate histogram data sets that we're going to use to generate a genome profile. So we're going to run Mary a third time, and this time we're going to generate histogram data sets. So we select generate histogram data sets, and we run it on the latest database, Mary database. And we're going to use this data sets to run genome scope, which is going to give us information about our genome statistics. So we look for genome scope in the tools. We run it on the Mary database histogram. Uh, so we're working on a diproid species and we have been using camera length of 21. And so um, we're gonna select 21 again and we're gonna run tool. And we come back when it's done running to take a look at the genome scope plots. Okay, now that genome scope is done running, we're going to take a look at the plot that it produced. So we're going to look at the linear plot and we're going to click on the little eye icon on the data set in the history. So if you're like me and the image is too big for your window, you can right click and open the image in another tab. And we're going to explain what's going on in the screen here. So the first information is you have your um, estimation of statistics about your genome. So you have a length of about 124 million base pairs. Um, you have a uh, um, heterozygosity rate, which is AB 1.32%. You have a chemo coverage of about 35, which means for um, each base, you have um, 35 came up covering it in average. Um, so now we're going to look at the plot. So what it's showing is you have uh, the coverage of cameras and you have the frequency of each coverage. And you see that you have two peaks, one which is about 35 and the other about twice that. And that corresponds to, uh, for the first peak, the heterozygous Ghost region and for the second peak, the homozygous region. Uh, this is because uh, homozygous region uh, for a given camera, you're going to find it twice as much between the two haplotypes that you're going to find them in a single haplotype. So uh, you have this dotted line which corresponds to um, ProID of one, two, three, and four. So if your organism has more than uh, two ProID, you're going to find three peaks, four peaks etc. Uh, you also have um, the uh, camera error. You have a peak about zero, which are cameras that have sequencing error. And uh, they are very rare because camera over this region are going to be in the two peaks if they're correct. Uh, so one thing to look for in this situation is you want to check that the black line 
is fitting the histograms properly. That indicates that your estimated genome size and your heterozygosity and your estimated chemical coverage are uh, likely correct. So this plot shows you the chemical distribution in the reads. Now what we want to see is what the chemical distribution in our assembly looks like. And in order to do that, we're going to use a tool called Mercury. So you're going to go back to Galaxy, and you're going to click on Tool and search for Mercury. So we want to evaluate the assembly quality. So the evaluation mode is default mode. Uh, the camera count database is the Merit database. Um, so this is the latest one that cover the reads for the all PyPayU data set. And we want to evaluate one assembly, and this is the uh, C reformities assembly. Um, without changing anything else, and you can click on Run Tour. So you're going to wait a second for it to run. And in the meantime, we're going to prepare our data to get some general assembly statistics with GFA stats. It's going to give you the number of scaffold, the N50, uh, and diverse information. So we're going to go into Galaxy, and we're going to look at the GFA stat tool. The input file is the assembly. We want to have uh, summary statistics, general genome assembly statistic, and we're not changing anything else. So we run the tool, and then we're going to wait a minute and see what statistics it gives us. Um, finally, Another thing that we want to look at, uh, since we have high C data, we want to see how good our scaffolding is. So the way high C data works is it's going to give you information on how close two sequences are together physically in the nucleus of the genome. And what you expected to see um, when you produce this uh, heat map is this uh, contact map that are within one scaffold, everything is closed, and because that's because in the nucleus, chromosomes are packed together, and so the sequence are physically close together in 3D when they belong to the same chromosome. So that will give us information about is the scaffolding um, correct, do we, can we link scaffold together, or do we need to divide scaffolds? And so we're going to do that with high series. OK, so uh, important thing here for this analysis, you need to have one data set for your forward read and one data set for your reverse read. So if you don't have that, you're going to do this um, first hands-on. But for the example that we use in this video, we are fine. We don't need to merge uh, any collection. So we're going to directly to mapping with w BWMM. So we're going to go back to Galaxy. We're going to search for BWMM, and we're going to use a genome from the history because we want to look at uh, the heat map for our assembly. So we're going to select the C-reformities assembly as FASTA. We're going to select single end, and we're selecting single end because this is not a regular paired end analysis. High C, you. you if you use um, paired end setting in this case, they're going to expect a certain distance between paired reads, which is not the case here. So we want to first align your forward read, then align reverse read, and then we're going to merge the alignment together um, because we don't want to be constrained by the distance between the paired end reads. So we're going to select single. We're going to run it on the forward read first. Uh, we want a simple Illumina mode, and we want to sort by read name. So once all of this is set, we're going to run the tool, and we're going to do the same thing for reverse read. So you don't need to re-enter all the parameters again. You can just click on your data set in your history, click on the little uh, circling arrow, 
run the job again, and you're just going to replace the fastq dataset with the reverse dataset instead of the forward dataset. Run tool again. And to merge the alignment, we're going to use the tool filter and merge. So we're going to use first set of read is number 32 because that's the forward reads and number 33 are the reverse reads and run tool. So while it's running, we can take a look at what the stats from GFI stats look like. So you see that you have the number of scaffold, the total scaffold length. This is very similar to what you got um, from the block toolkit information, except it's in tabular form and you have the number of gaps, um, number of gaps per scaffold, etc. etc. So you're gonna we're gonna wait a little bit for everything to run and we'll come back and look at our results a little bit later. Now that Mercury is done running, we're gonna take a look at the plots. So you're going to open the collection by clicking on it in the history and we're going to look at um, the spectra cn the spectra copy number same as before if the image is too large open the image in a new tab and um, so we have three information here so this is for uh, the assembly that we are looking for it's similar to the plot from genome scope in that you have the camera uh, multiplicity and the count instead of the frequency. So what you expect to find is these two peaks again. Um, so you have uh, reads that are coverage of 38, uh, uh, camera that are coverage of double that. And in gray, you have uh, camera that are read only. Read only means that you find them in your reads, but you don't find them in the assembly. So um, that's one thing you need to look for. You want to make sure that uh, it means that if, if you have a peak that is coverage 38, which is the heterozygous peak in your read only, it means that some of the read has been missed in the assembly that should have been there. Um, and you also have a peak at uh, heterozygous, which means like you are missing a lot of information from your reads that didn't end up in your assembly. The second thing that you are going to look at is you want to look at the um, two. So uh, the red curve means that the camera have um, are found at 38 coverage, which means you find them for one camera in the assembly, you find them 38 times in the reads, but you find them only once in the assembly in red. The blue curve means you find them twice in the assembly, uh, which means that if you have some significant blue curve, you probably have duplication in your assembly. Here it looks like we have some duplication, but it's pretty low. Uh, but it looks like we're looking, we're missing completeness in your assembly. Um, so this is information you get from Mercury. And uh, now that the filter and merge is on running as well, we're going to generate our high C map. And uh, to generate this high C heat map, we're going to use pretext. Uh, pretext is going to generate, it's, it's a binary file. You can either download it and use it on your computer if you want to manually create your uh, genome, but you can also look at them as a static image in Galaxy using pretext snapshot. So we're going to open pretext map. We're going to select uh, the filter and merge that we run earlier. And we're going to sort by ascending. OK, run tool. And then we're going to use pretext snapshot. 
we're going to run it on the pretext map that we just generated. And we want to show the grid. Run tool. And while it's running, we're going to generate another a final type of visualization, which is the assembly graph. Uh, so Bendage is used to generate assembly graph. And this is going to give you this type of image where each band is a scaffold. And uh, you have connection between scaffolds that are displayed by red lines. So we're going to generate the um, GFR format, which is an augmented format, which includes not only the sequences, but also information of linkage between the scaffold and, and graph information. And to generate this GFA, we're going to use GFA stats. So we are back to Galaxy. We're going back to GFA stats. We're going to use our assembly. And this time, we don't want to generate summary statistics. We want to manipulate our genome assembly. Uh, and we want to convert it to GFA. So in output format, you select GFA. And for terminal overlap selection, we select no. And run tools. And from this GFA format, we're going to generate the bandage image. So we're using the GFA Yes, 46, that's the right data set. And that's the only thing we're going to change. OK, run tools. And we'll be back in a few when it's done running. Now that it's done running, let's take a look at the outputs. So we're going to look at pretext snapshot first. So you see it's a list with 15 data sets. And when you click on it, what it's composed of is you have one heat map for each chromosome and one heat map for the whole assembly. So we're going to click on the eye for the whole assembly. And you see here that you have a pretty noisy map. You seem to have um, a lot of unresolved scaffold, so it probably can be um, scaffolded more. But you still have this diagonal, which is indication that you have more contact within the scaffold than between scaffolds. Um, if you look at the tutorial and you look at the map from the Regine, that's what you're supposed to see. You're supposed to see contacts only within the scaffold and not between scaffolds. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at, we're going to go back to the history by clicking on the top of the, of the panel. And we're going to look at the bandage image. And you can see here that you have your scaffold. You have a link between the scaffolds, um, which is another indication that it can be improved by linking the scaffold together into a super scaffold. So there you are. Uh, this is our video for today. Uh, you can spend more time on this tutorial by doing the same analysis on the other species and see what are the differences that you can see in, in assembly quality. And uh, thank you for tuning in with us today. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.